Hi guys, this is Cribbly again with another pen review. And today I have another Diplomat pen for you. The Diplomat pen that we're going to have a look at today is the so-called Diplomat Elox. What is the Diplomat Elox? Well, the Diplomat Elox is essentially uh, the same pen than the Diplomat Aero that many of you know. Uh, I think I have reviewed the Diplomat Aero in 2016, many, many years ago. And the Diplomat Aero, as I said, is essentially the exact same pen, just that it has a fluted design. Check Diplomat Aero on scribbly.org and you will see exactly what I mean. I don't have it here right now. As I said, it has a fluted design. It's reminiscent shape-wise of the Zeppelin spaceships. And the Alox is essentially the same pen, just that it comes in a slightly different design. It doesn't have the fluting, but it has either these rings. The pen is an anodized pen and it either comes with these rings in different colors. Right here, we're looking at the orange one. Uh, it also comes in green, purple, blue, and I think a bunch of other colors. And there is also a different design, which I think is called Matrix. Well, and then you have kind of a checkered matrix design on that pen. It looks, the Alox looks much more futuristic than the Aero, uh, even with those rings. And if you have it with the matrix design, it does look even more futuristic. Just uh, while I'm talking about the uh, Aero and me having reviewed the Aero in 2016, let's talk price right now. This pen costs, uh, I mean, right at the beginning of the review, this pen now costs... Uh, on the Diplomat online shop, I think 230 euro. I think the arrow goes for 195, something like that. Uh, I checked it uh, on applebaum.com, round about a similar price. When I reviewed the arrow in 2016, and I'm checking my website here in parallel, I said that it was available from around 85 to 100 euro, meaning that the price of the arrow has almost doubled uh, since 2016. Uh, also because I was surprised that 225 euro for this pen, well, it's a nice pen, I'll, I'll cover it now, right? But uh, 225 euro is quite cheap, uh, uh, quite steep, not cheap, it's quite steep, at least in my opinion. I mean, you get uh, all kinds of Faber-Castell pens for much less than 230 euro. Anyway, the Diplomat, right? It comes in this box, here that you know from the Diplomat pens that I have reviewed in the past. Uh, it's the Elox Asset, the Füllhalter or Fountain Pen uh, in black orange, extra fine nib. And then no surprise when I open the package, right? It's this nice aluminum that is known from Diplomat pens. Get a warranty card, get two cartridges, um, and that's it. So, the Diplomat Elox, as said, a, reminiscent, a pen shape reminiscent of Zeppelin spaceships. You can also say it's like a cigar shaped pen, right? It has two steep ends, one a bit more pointy than the other. It's anodized aluminium, meaning it's a quite lightweight pen. You have the Diplomat Inkflower logo here at the finial, laser etched, uh, I assume. You have a black matte black anodized clip. See a little bit fingerprints on here. Quite springy, works very, very well. Quite nice clip. You see these aluminum rings that are ever so slightly recessed into the pen body cap or the, the, the pen cap, uh, the body down here. Very nice, vibrant orange. Looks really, really cool. I do like it a lot. Then you have like Diplomat in all caps. Looks a little bit Art Deco-like, I find. Germany then in small letters. Very nice. And then tapers down quite a bit to a pointy, again, matte anodized end. It's a friction fit push on cap. 
with some sealing inside here to prevent the nib from drying out. Has a very satisfying closure mechanism. Here it is click and has like a very satisfying feel to it. It's almost a bit of a fidget toy. Very nice. Oops. You have a very nice, pretty long orange section. So then if the pen is purple or green or blue, then the section will of course mirror the pen color. Fairly long, tapering down ever so slightly. No problem finding your grip on that one. I don't find it slippery. It has a bit of texture to it. Very, very minimal, but it's uh, I think enough to, you know, prevent your fingers from sliding down. Flares out down here as a, you know, again, a protection for your fingers to not slide onto the nib. It's a pretty decent sized pen. I don't have the smallest hands on the planet, but like that sits very nicely uh, in my hand. You can absolutely post the pen. Doesn't make it back heavy whatsoever. Well, ever so slightly, maybe. Uh, not, not in an uncomfortable way, but you definitely feel that like no more of the weight is back here. Posts fairly deep, fairly secure. Um, I don't find it fantastically beautiful when closed. I prefer uh, when posted, I prefer to write it unposted. It's plenty long enough and I find it lies, lays nicer in the hand. It's quite lightweight because it's made from aluminum. It's not too lightweight for me personally though. It uh, works, works all right. I mean, if you're okay to ride with the Lamy Safari, that's definitely more lightweight than that one. Uh, but obviously it's not like a very, very heavy pen, right? Um, so posting does work, if that's what you prefer. We have a nice number six size nib right here. It's Yovo making those nibs for diplomats. It's a very nice nib. Um, it came quite smooth out of the box. I'll do a writing sample in a minute, but I already give you a heads up, already give you a heads up that I was running this nib over a little bit of micro mesh because I wanted to have a bit more feedback on that nib. Uh, so I added some feedback on the nib by running in a bit over micro mesh because that's what I like better. You see the Yovo feet down there. As said, this number six size nib, it says then Diplomat since 1922, EF for the size of the nib width. And again, we have the Inkflower logo on there. Unscrew the pen like that. Uh, out comes a converter that's provided with the pen. Uh, I guess it's Schmidt making those converters. Uh, it's a uh, cartridge converter filler then, as you see, uh, standard size. Very, very well machined uh, overall, top-notch quality. There's absolutely nothing to complain. Works beautifully. Yeah, screws on here like a breeze, absolutely great top-notch engineering, nothing to complain here. Size comparison to my standard size reference pen, Lamy Safari. Pretty safe to say that this is about exactly the same size. When kept, when unkept, the picture doesn't change much. Pretty much exactly the length of a Lamy Safari. Just uh, that the proportions are, of course, ever so slightly different because the nib is a number five-ish versus a number six size nib. You already see that this EF uh, or extra fine nib here is quite a dagger. It's a very, very fine nib. Let me do a writing sample. Writes very nicely, uh, especially now that I added some feedback to it. Uh, and uh, if, if you don't like you know, sailor-ish writing experiences. You obviously don't have to do that. The pen was writing perfectly fine when it came out of the box. Um, that was great. Let me write a few lines.
So, there you go. That's the Diplomat Elox. The riding experience is um, okay. It's nothing that knocks it out of the park. If you don't press the pen really, really hard, it's stiff as a nail. Um, you can get some line variation out of it, uh, as you have seen right here. But you really, really, really have to push it. Uh, I definitely wouldn't want to ride with the pen like this. Number one, I don't think, uh, or I know that the nib for sure is not intended to be written like that. Number two, you will have to press much harder than if you would write with a ballpoint pen, which kind of defeats the purpose of writing with a fountain pen. On the upside of the coin, uh, of course, this will give you quite a lot of consistency in your line, because uh, if you don't push it, the line will be very, very consistent. It's a very true to the size, extra fine. Just for you to have a bit of comparison, here you have a fine nibbed um, Twisby Eco T, and you see that the nib is wider. Here's the Lamy 2000, also sporting a fine nib. Right, and you see the nib is wider. So it's a pretty, pretty true to the size, extra fine nib. As said, writes perfectly well, absolutely does the job. Is it a fantastic writing experience? Yeah, not really. The, I mean, these Jovo nibs, they're really good. The Diplomat nibs are really good. Um, I have the ex feeling that the ones that I tried back in the days, uh, maybe it was either because they were a little bit wider or they were slightly different back in the days. It was a little bit better, more interesting, more exciting writing experience. There's nothing wrong with that. It just doesn't, you know, really do anything to me as in, you know, like being a bit bouncy or springy or something like that but it doesn't skip uh, it keeps up with fast writing uh, puts down a very very consistent line uh, you know medium wetness uh, this here is inked by the way with pelican edelstein topaz which is like a fairly dry ink or an ink on the drier side of the spectrum so won't give you uh crazy wet lines uh, especially not when you compare uh, uh, pair it with drier inks so that's that's all right. Price, as said, we discussed it in the beginning, 220 euro for a cartridge converter pen with a steel nib. I find is not outrageous, but it's definitely on the more expensive end, uh, especially comparing it to 2016, uh, the Aero, uh, when it went for like 100 euro. Now I know the Elox, perhaps because of the uh, anodizing and the coloring and so on, is right now going for 225 euro, whereas the arrow goes for uh, 195. So it's a little bit more expensive. But I'm wondering overall whether fountain pen prices maybe have increased quite a bit um, over the last few years. I think I will uh, in the future look at that a little bit deeper as well. Um, of course, I've been doing these reviews now for very, very many years. So... Um, and of course, online, you can check the price references and how prices have developed the last five to 10 years. We'll keep an eye on that. You, there's definitely nothing wrong with this pen. Uh, if you spend a 200, slightly over 200 bucks on that, it will serve you well. It is a very well built pen. I don't think uh, that there's anything on this pen that, you know, is flimsy or prone to breaking. Uh, I'm sure this will be a great investment. But of course, if you're looking into alternatives, as said, for instance, Faber-Castell makes fantastic pens, uh, also great build quality, also cartridge converter, also steel nibs. Um, and you will find plenty of selection, such as the E-Motion, for instance, or the Ondoro, which will not set you back 220 something euro. But hey, that's up to you. There's nothing wrong with the pen, as said, built like a tank, all good. That was just like a small pointer on price and perhaps also on fountain pen price development. Guys, that was that with the review of the Diplomat Elox. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Ciao, ciao.